Right, here we go. Um, I'm back on the watercolours again today. Um, not sure what I'm going to be doing except that it's a seascape. I've changed my setup slightly in that I've got a I've got the camera on the other side to see if it's any less intrusive with my hand getting in the middle. Right, there we go. I don't know what I'm going to be doing except it's a seascape. I've done my um, pre preliminary sketch. There it is. A horizon line. Okay, now what I'm going to do is wet it all over I'm going to do I think a fairly open beach and sky I might think I'll put that line up too high ah we'll see right okay there's lots of water on the paper lots of water on the brush give that a chance to dry a little bit um, I'm using my Stratford and York brushes which I keep on going on about I love them I find them much easier to control than a hate I know I shouldn't admit that, but it's true. There we go, that's my Stratford and York, York Extra Large Jet. Stratford and York Large Jet and my Stratford and York um, Half Inch Flat. Now they're the ones I use most of the time. Also, somewhere, I've got my SAA number 4 Rigger which is finishes off my usual brushes these days right okay that's fairly soaked in using saunders waterford 140 pounds not paper on my board which is I think about 40 degrees or thereabouts right okay nice and soggy start off with some ultramarine nice strong summery ultramarine it's been an absolutely gorgeous day here today Right, really, really strong ultramarine blue. Let that run down the paper. So that is, or will be, technical term, a graduated wash because it starts off dark and ends up light. Now, while it's still wet, I'm going to pull out some fluffy clouds. To do that, dry the brush off till it's damp and then some clean water in and 
just pull out some fluffy little clouds. I've said before I like doing it this way because it doesn't look quite so mechanical as doing it with a tissue or scraping it out. Um, a little bit more out on this side Those are my Charles Evans clouds. Put a little fluffy one at the top there where that band has got itself stuck. Right, okay, there we go. Join that up. see what it looks like now just along the um, horizon in the sky I'm going to put in now, I was going to put in some raw sienna but I'm not I'm going to warm it up a bit more I'm putting a touch of yellow ochre quite a lot of water and there's already quite a lot of water on the paper so band of darker cloud I'll put some offshoots coming up but that's just to tie the link together okay some alizarin mix it in with the ultramarine Uh, 
and just here where it's all nice and wet just tie in some of these darker clouds and then once I put it in just softening up the hard edges with a damp brush Okay, there we go. Now I am going to use a little bit of kitchen roll here just to clean up dry that up and that's because I don't want to have to um, get out the hair dryer and I want that dry quite quickly and what I'm going to do here is if I can get my box of tricks out I'm going to use a piece of candle and just completely random across the sea area I'm going to drag some odd bits of candle I've been pressing hard I've just put the wax across there and what I'm going to do next is with the middle sized brush I'm going to mix up a greeny grey colour and some slop some water in some of the ultramarine touch of hooker's green yeah hooker's green very naughty using green colors but they do make good sea hooker's green is a terrible color on its own but if you mix it with almost anything, you can get all sorts of lovely colours with it. Right, I've got... Put some yellow in there as well. There, that should work. A little bit thicker. Except it's not hooker's green, I've just realised in this paint box it's olive green 
there you go it's not a lot different right okay what I'm going to do now that's fairly dry so I'm just going to resists the paint and you end up with sparkle going to do is I'm going to suck out the edge still leave just a little touch of that greeny bluey colour now I'm going to make some sandy colour start off with an undercoat of a colour called sandstone and a touch of yellow ochre both of which are fairly granular semi-opaque colours but I'm still going to dry off a lot of the brush so that I get a fluffy edge a little bit more of the yellow ochre to come to the front there we've got the sea What I'm going to do now is mix a little bit of light red into that beachy colour and taking it Paint it in, wash out the brush, dry out the brush. When I say dry out the brush, what I'm doing is I'm not using um, kitchen roll or anything. I'm just going, drying it out that way. bit of 
shadow I'm going to use more or less the same colour that I used for the sky for the dark clouds in the sky which is ultramarine with a dash of alizarin crimson into that I'm going to put in just a touch of the raw umber to get a sort of darky colour and now I'm going to put a very very thin broken shadowy line just at the edge of the sea now where some of these wavy things are darker bluey green the ultramarine and the olive and into that just a touch of the yellow ochre now I'm going to put some little shadows underneath these white horses Here it's a bit rougher, a little bit darker, Just here, I've got the very, very thin layer of water, and you get some of the yellow ochre, very, very thin wash, add some of the sandstone to it. Very, very thin fairly wet. I'm just going to put a glaze across it which might be the sand showing through it. Now We've got a it dried a bit strangely there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some lemon yellow. Thank you. 
have some light playing about on the horizon there. Again, I'm using this great big enormous brush for these delicate little things. Use the dark green again. And all I'm doing is just putting in some little remember they'll dry a lot lighter now I think I'm going to just put a little bit of interest in the shore no I might I will I'll put in a little bit of headland over there to break it up use my quarter inch wash gonna make a very pale purpley color lots of water others are in some of the raw sienna and the ultramarine blue now While that's still wet, dry out the brush. Make sure it's clean and just damp. Then I'll put a little bit of interest in that headland. Keep washing out the brush or you'll just end up moving the paint from one part to another there we've got a little bit of headland over there and coming into the front I think I'll put a few rocks around here just to add some interest to it. Maybe that side's boring, isn't it, at the moment? Now, we're going to have an interesting situation where I'm going to have to try and cover up the wax, but never mind. I'm using very dark colours. got a neutral tone which is the green shade of neutral tone and some grey now before I start using that very dark tone I'm going to put some ultramarine some alizarin
put some on the other side not so much on this side waiting for that to dry while I'm doing that clean out my brush some absolutely clean water and here I'm just going to put a dash of clean water across there dry out the brush and then Right, that's nearly dry down there. What I'm going to do is use my very, very black black. I want it really, really thick. I also, before I do anything else, want to get a piece of credit card. do it's not very good shape but oh I know where the other ones are they're in here there got a cor curly cornered ones when uh, it's easy to get these bits of credit card I mean I just they keep coming through the door and I just cut them up save the bank the problem There, and we're going to get some really dark, thick, dark, dark on top of all this. Now that is really thick, thick paint. And that in there. Then and put out
right, some more of the black black on the other side. going off just a little bit use the quarter inch and mix up some sandy colors Right now, little brush, and I'm going to mix up a puddle of yellow ochre. and light red. Right, this is the finished picture. The problem with my new setup was that I had no idea that the battery had run out because I had faulty batteries in it. Anyway, just um, where I'd left it, I was just about to scrape out these rocks in the foreground, which I did exactly the same way as I did those rocks in the, fo in the foreground. Um, I also while I had some dark paint around, put in some the little breakwater going across there. Um, I also, as well as the as well as the candle wax, I used a tiny bit of white gouache just to add some more sparkle to the waves and. In 
the foreground I added some little rock pools, scratched out some more rocks. There's the breakwater. Sun's a bit yellower. And just a little bit of action, of life to it. I put in a couple of yachts and some little seagulls again to pick out the goals I used tiny dashes of white and there we go I decided in the end to call it red sails in the sunset next time I do a video I shall have to try to remember to keep my eye on whether the batteries run out or not Okay, that's the end of that one.